So we begin this episode of Raw not with a match but more of a brawl. The referee is trying to stop these six men from going at each other. There was meant to be a three on three tag match. Um, Team Triple H which is AJ Styles, Finn Balor and Noam Dar taking on Code of Honor. Um, but Moxley, Murphy and uh, Osprey jump the barricade and now there's just this brutal war waging. <laughs> I can't believe what's going on at the moment. We're going to have to see if we can get some referees down here to separate these two. Maybe get Cody Rhodes and Triple H out here as well so that we can get these guys to hold off until the pay-per-view on Sunday. Okay, so after that mayhem, we're kicking off the show properly with an actual match, I guess, now that we've missed our six-man tag. Um, but this is going to be a women's Survivor Series qualifier, the final one to find out who will join Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong. We've got Lacey Evans, and she will have a teammate with her, and they'll be taking on another team of two. And her teammate, not in the best condition, but willing to fight to get onto that Survivor Series pay-per-view. And that is Tony Storm, former women's champion. Unfortunately unsuccessful at the pay-per-view when she was made to tap out by Asuka, the person that she lost that belt to back at Hell in a Cell. And Tony Storm is on the climb again, despite being injured. Now it doesn't matter if you get along on Raw, you're forced to team together for the sake of brand supremacy. However, we've got NXT Women's Champion Maria Kanellis, who made her Raw debut at Elimination Chamber. And it looks like Cody Rhodes is offering her an opportunity to fight at Survivor Series for the red brand. The question is, oh my god, we've got a return. Never mind, there's no questions about it. I was going to say the question is, who has she picked to team with her? Sasha Banks makes her return and looks to represent Survivor Series. Uh, represent Survivor Series? Re represent Raw at Survivor Series? I'm just flabbergasted that Sasha Banks is actually back. It's been debated for quite some time whether Sasha Banks would be returning to Raw or SmackDown or maybe even NXT. And it looks like Cody Rhodes offered Sasha enough cash to keep her to keep her grounded in the red brand. As Maria and Lacey Evans fight it off. Remember these women are going to be joining Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong. A decent, a decent team so far. Bionic Spear and that uh, Implant Buster. A good combo so far. They had a really, really brilliant match against, I believe it was Candice LeRae and Becky Lynch. Unfortunately dethroning them. We don't know who will be on the SmackDown women's team because Paul Heyman has said, I'm not going to do qualifiers, I'm not revealing my game plan. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. But Sasha Banks is one hell of a reveal and it's going to be interesting to see what Paul Heyman ends up pulling out of the sack come Survivor Series. And Maria, ignoring Lacey Evans there for a moment and attacking Tony Storm, who delivers a quick jab to, uh, to Maria Kanellis in return. And look at that, that handstand choke. Maria's been incredibly impressive recently after defeating Candice LeRae in a steel cage match back on NXT to, to win that championship. And now blowing her a kiss, taunting Lacey Evans a little bit there. Oh my god, trying to make the tag to Sasha, but quick elbow. These two women now back and forth. We could see Lacey Evans appear on NXT. Tag made to Sasha Banks. Returning to in-ring action, I believe, for the first time this season. I might be wrong, but I believe it's the first time. And now tag made to Tony Storm, a possible dream match. Oh my god! And Tony Storm gets laid out. Remember, Tony Storm is injured. We've got Mike Kanellis on ringside there. He will also be at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. We may see Maria accompany him to ringside. They're going to be opening the show to determine the new NXT men's champion. We could be seeing a future NXT power couple. Later on tonight, we've got... Well, we, we should have had six-man tag. 
But, uh, oh, it looks like Lacey Evans might be in the way. <laughs> We've instead got Velveteen Dream returning for a match. He's going to be taking on Bobby Roode, who, if you watched last week, you'll know is now aligned with EC3 and Drake Maverick in an odd little, an odd little faction. And uh, tonight's main event is going to be Pete Dunne taking on Johnny Gargano, which we'll talk more about a little bit later on. And now Lacey Evans looking to get some momentum over Sasha Banks, and she does with that, with that arm ringer down to the floor. And now stomp to the wrist. What is she doing? Sasha Banks is laid out. Oh my god! A mat slam! Slam in the face of Sasha Banks. Sasha Bank, uh, Sasha Bank, <laughs> just a singular. Sasha Banks getting a mug smash there into the into the canvas. And now, Irish whip from Sasha to Lacey. Tag made back to NXT Women's Champion Maria. Snapmare, soccer ball kick combo, and I think Tony Storm might be realizing that the combination of Lacey Evans and Tony Storm might not be the best. There's an arm ringer though. Using her speed to her advantage. And there's a diving crossbody by Maria. Who's now throwing a tantrum at the frustration that she's uh, having to go through. And now instead of going after Lacey Evans, Maria again going after Tony Storm. I don't know what a vendetta is with Tony, but... I, don't, I think she probably should have focused a little bit more on Lacey. Pummels to the back there, went for a super kick. It's a good job she didn't hit it, otherwise that could have been lights out for Lacey Evans. Oh my god, jab to the face while Lacey Evans were talking smack to her. Holy shit. The, uh, the lack of chemistry between Storm and Lacey Evans could mean that they ain't going to make it to Survivor Series if they keep on like this. Maria now looking for that bulldog. And she hits it. And Lacey Evans is just laid out now. <laughs> it's not looking great. Looking for that modified Miracle Buster. There it is. She's not going for a pin though. Instead, tagging in her partner, Sasha Banks. Could be looking for a little bit of double trouble. Some double finishing maneuvers. Punch to the face. Oh my god, looking for the bank statement. She's got it cinched in. Is Tony going to come in and break it up, or is she given up for now? And Lacey Evans taps out. Tony is just too injured to continue. So, singles action. And as previously mentioned, Bobby Roode, Velveteen Dream. Bobby Roode looks to pick up some momentum moving towards the Royal Rumble, which we're roughly a month away. And it's pretty much, I, I, would, I would say it's pretty much confirmed that Bobby Roode would be in the Royal Rumble. Maybe if he loses this match he won't be, but we'll see what happens. But it would be nice for Bobby Roode to represent this faction in the Royal Rumble match. We don't know if the Intercontinental belt will be on the line. If EC3 will defend at that pay-per-view or not. We'll have to wait and see. And his opponent. A man that has had horrific luck as of late. But another man that... Can you imagine if Velveteen Dream won the Rumble? Velveteen Dream looks to capture some momentum, as mentioned. However, the GMs are currently considering doing a match to determine somebody who could enter number 30. Velveteen Dream might be a little bit interested in that. We'll have to wait and see whether they decide on that. We'll have to see what happens at Survivor Series. Maybe the brand that comes out with the most points gets the number 30 spot, then it's just down to pick the superstar. Here we go, Bobby Roode and Velveteen Dream 
out here to hopefully try and prove that, well, I guess they're worthy enough to be not only in the Rumble, but number 30. Um, so, yeah, Velveteen Dream and Bobby Roode got a lot to gain from this. One of them could be number 30 and then go to WrestleMania after last year's Royal Rumble, where Stone Cold came in last and won. The odds are, number 30 will do the same again. Now, it is probably worth noting that not only did Rude and EC3 have a fantastic intercontinental rivalry last year, but Velveteen Dream and EC3 had a fantastic match with Battle of the Attires when they battled at Fastlane. EC3 throwing a lot of shade at Velveteen Dream and Dream came out wearing EC3's face planted all over his tights and he came out looking like some sort of final boss battle from an anime Japanese Sega game. I don't know. He looked like a, a mixture of everything. It was pretty impressive. And now taunting EC3, Velveteen Dream and him having obviously that pass there which also relates to Adam Pachiti from NXT, the current NXT GM. They were members of Pachiti Club. And EC3 and Pachiti Club attacked Velveteen Dream. Super kick there by Velveteen Dream. We don't know if Dream is going to be chosen for the Red Brand's representation. He could be, depending on if he wins this match. Reversal there to what looked like a snapmare. We know that Paul Heyman's probably going to be bringing out the big guns when it comes to a Survivor Series traditional match. Which I'm sure worries a lot of the men on Raw because we don't really have any monsters on Raw. And any that we did have had, uh, ended up going over to SmackDown in the drafts. So it's certainly going to be an interesting, an interesting revelation. But Velveteen Dream controlling this match. Looking at Drake Maverick now. Oh my god. Overhead belly to belly. He just scooped up Maverick and tossed him. And there's a super kick into the table. Maverick dodging that drop kick though and Rude managing to uh, to capitalise on the distraction that Velveteen Dream caused himself. And now it's slightly ironic because Bobby Rude's face is starting to look like Velveteen Dream's tights as that, as that cut opens up from that, that ring post attack. And now... Oh my god, Velveteen Dream, Dream DT to EC3 sending a message that maybe he wants that mid-card belt. We could see EC3 and Dream go at it at Royal Rumble, depending on what happens. Kick to the gut there. And there's a rude awakening to Bobby Rude. Rude with a reversal, inverted DDT there. EC3's back to his feet after that Dream DT on the outside. And now... Rude looked like he was going for a rude bomb. Inverted DDT by Velveteen Dream, managing to reverse it. Oh my god, and a slap to Bobby Rude, who's arguably a veteran at this stage in his career. Obviously, a massive career over in TNA and Impact. Velveteen Dream's a WWE homegrown superstar. And Drake Maverick looks a little bit worried. For uh, the state of Bobby Roode, who gets his knees up. Deflecting a body splash from Velveteen Dream. Big right hook, followed by another. Double arm underhook. Butterfly suplex with a bridging pin. But Dream kicks out at two. Bobby Roode grounded. Velveteen Dream might be looking to finish this off. He's picking up Roode. What's he going for? Centre of the ring. Oh my god, a Roode bomb. Dropping Rude to the floor, oh my god, and now he he's copying everything that Rude would usually do. Kick to the gut. Went for that glo glorious DDT reversal there by Rude. And Dream, trying to get back to his feet, he was showing off a little bit too much, maybe a little bit too cocky. Uh, oh my god, kick to the gut. Glorious DDT to Velveteen Dream. One, two... And Dream kicks out at two. Barely there. Velveteen Dream manages to stay in this thing. 
And now Bobby Roode, out of frustration, cranking the neck, trying to wear down Dream and hopefully knock him out. And now possibly setting up for another glorious DDT. Dream with a reversal though. Oh my god, he went for something. Bobby moved out the way and then got slapped. Dream Valley Driver. And Dream could be looking for the finish here. Bobby's not moving. That is one hell of a leap that Velveteen Dream is considering. I don't know if he's going to actually make it. It's certainly a risky one. And Bobby Roode gets up in the nick of time. Clothesline though, taking down Roode. Velveteen Dream needs to stop bragging, needs to stop showing off and just get this match done. And Velveteen Dream on the outside now with a referee down. Oh my god, hitting EC3 and Maverick with the chair. Bobby Roode back to his feet though. Oh my god, went for something, got hit with a fireman's carry instead. But firing back at Velveteen Dream. Those gut shots. Oh my god, suplex there to Dream. Where in the world is Bobby Roode going? This is not going to end well. Bobby Roode never usually goes to the top rope. And there's a reason for it. Oh my god. Dream with a reversal. And now. Looking at EC3. Glorious DDT to Dream. Uh, to, to Roode. One. Two. And that is it. Dream pins Roode with his own move. Velveteen Dream with a well-deserved victory there. What a fantastic win for Dream. Laying out Rude, what is he doing? Oh my god. I don't know whether this is a smart idea to piss off Rude and EC3 even more. But he's getting a pop out the crowd. So we've got some women's division action in our co-main event. And during that previous match, Asuka asked GM Cody Rhodes on Twitter if she could have Riot tonight. And Cody Rhodes replied saying, yes, have a ball. So I'm presuming this is a handicap match. However, he quickly followed that tweet up by saying, feel free to bring back up. So it looks like we could be having a similar, a similar picture to what happened at the start of the show. The Women's Universal Champion Asuka coming out to the ring here. Will she have any tag partners? And it looks like she's found herself a partner in Candice LeRae. Which is strange considering LeRae is currently at the top of the pecking order. In terms of who's going to challenge Asuka for Royal Rumble. We saw that Tony Storm and Lacey Evans didn't get on too well. Can Candice LeRae and Asuka put their diff differences aside to fight the Riot Squad? Don't know if it'll be two on two or three on two, but we'll see if it's enough to send Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan packing. And now this match starts with the matchup that ended the women's division section last week: Asuka and Ruby Riot. Just to recap, Asuka fought Liv Morgan one on one. Candice LeRae came out, distracted Liv Morgan. Asuka picked up the win. And then Ruby Riot came out and cashed in on Asuka. Got very, very close to beating Asuka, but it wasn't enough. Asuka then made Ruby Riot tap out. So, a weird little sequence of events. And now with the return of Sasha Banks and the arrival of Awesome Kong a few weeks ago. Oh my god, a kick to the head there. The Raw Women's Division is starting to stack up with some pretty big names and some pretty big competition. This Royal Rumble Championship match might end up being bigger than expected. And now with Asuka on the apron, Ruby Wright taking that moment for a tag. Liv Morgan now, who did the best in that Elimination Chamber, managed to last until the very end with Asuka. Before being forced to, uh, to submit. However, let's not forget that at Survivor Series, Asuka takes on... 
Paige in a brand versus brand match. Paige, who's also been doing pretty well. Paige took on uh, both members of Code of Honor, both female members of Code of Honor, Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. However, in recent events, Mickey James managed to pick up a roll up victory against Paige, which could certainly impact the future of the women's championship over on SmackDown. Asuka tried to make a tag there, but unsuccessful. Liv Morgan now, going for a monkey flip, throwing Asuka the length of the ring almost. Very, very impressive. Liv Morgan's shown that she can stand out on her own if needed. There's an arm breaker. You've got to think that the Riot Squad have got to have better chemistry than Candice LeRae and Asuka. So can Candice LeRae and Asuka be on the same page here tonight, we'll find out. Kick to the gut there by Asuka, trying for another tag, but Liv Morgan making sure she don't get it. Asuka's now back in the corner of the Riot Squad, tag made to Ruby Riot, the leader. It's a good job that Asuka brought out at least some backup, though we don't know just yet if it's going to be enough. And Asuka with an armbar locked in on Ruby Riot, looking to tap out Ruby Riot, who tapped out previously to an armbar at the hands of one Ronda Rousey. Rousey still out with a throat injury thanks to Shayna Baszler, which is certainly unfortunate. Tag made to Candice LeRae at last. Snapmare there, going for a move that we saw previously, and it worked out pretty well for Sasha Banks and Maria. Taking a page out of their book. Going for an Enziguri though. And Ruby Wright dodges out of the way. Catching the leg of Riot. There's a clothesline. So it seems as long as Candice LeRae and Asuka stop the Riot Squad from tagging. They can, they can keep control over the individual members. It's when they start working as a unit. Oh my god. Single knee face buster there. By Candice LeRae to Riot. What a move. Going for a drop kick, but Riot dodged out the way. High angle back suplex. No, Larray rolls out of it. Well, flips out of it. German suplex. Looking to make Riot tap out instead. Is she going to manage to? She's telling her Riot squad teammates not to come in and help her. She can get out of this on her own. I don't think she can. Neither does Larray and Daska. And she can't. Ruby Riot taps out. And now the final Raw match before the Survivor Series pay-per-view. Johnny Gargano looks to gain some massive, massive momentum by pinning the Universal Champion Pete Dunne in tonight's main event. We learned that last week, uh, Smackdown, we learned that Drew McIntyre would go on to face Pete Dunne at Survivor Series. A dream match for Universe Mode. Pete Dunne and Drew McIntyre, two of the most dominant superstars ever created. And Pete Dunne has not come alone, bringing all members of British Strong Style who won't be present at Survivor Series. They've been banned from ringside in that main event match. Here we go, Pete Dunn, Johnny Gargano. If Johnny Gargano wins this, I think not only will he find his, his spot on the Survivor Series card, but uh, he'll certainly find his spot in the Royal Rumble card, and that'll be in a championship match for certain. And a back suplex there to the bruiser weight. I don't know if Pete Dunn can, can afford to, to lose a match at this point in his title reign. Any single loss would be massive. So Johnny Gargano unfortunately not having any backup due to Tommaso Ciampa being out with an injury. Members of DIY competed earlier this year, challenged for the tag belts. Did a pretty decent job until Ciampa was uh, put out with an injury just before SummerSlam. 
Hopefully they can return to former glory next season, but until then, it's Johnny Gargano's opportunity. Back elbow shot there by Pete Dunne and then a tackle. And Johnny Gargano forced to take a breather. These two have fought in the past. They had a match at last year's TLC event, roughly this time last year, now that the calendar's been altered to be more accurate to, uh, to the in-game one. And unfortunately, Johnny Gargano, was it last year? I believe it was last year. He wasn't successful at TLC. Drop kick attempt there by Gargano. Turns straight around into a X-Plex there by Pete Dunne. Who is already doing fantastic. Pete Dunne at possibly the peak. If this is if, if this is how good he is at this age, God knows how brilliant he's going to be in a decade. This is the start of his universe mode career pretty much. And he has been the longest reigning champion ever. Three champions have held that belt, which we've mentioned in the past. The first one being Neville, the second being Finn Balor, and now the third two-time champion, Pete Dunne. Kick to the gut again of Johnny Gargano, looking for a possible Trevon bomb, and he hits it. Paying homage to Trevon, who's on the outside supporting him. And kick out there by Johnny Gargano. And Gargano with an axe handle. Followed by another. There's a roll up. Gargano kick into the corner. Gargano with a full head of steam. Could be looking for that lawn dart. Will he manage to hit it? Pete Dunne's wriggling. Oh my god. It's not good enough. Pete Dunne gets drilled into that middle turnbuckle. And now a Gargano escape on Pete Dunne. However, Pete Dunne's still fairly fresh. Johnny Gargano's just hit, well, basically Gargano's greatest hits on Pete Dunne. He's not worn him down. Punch to the gut and now raking at the face of Johnny Gargano, who's shown certainly a, uh, a brave resiliency against the bruiser weight, but that's not going to be enough. With Gargano on the outside, there's a springboard forearm by Pete Dunne. Full of adrenaline and momentum. Going for something else. Oh my god! Suicide dive to Gargano. He could send Gargano pack in here, which would be a shame. Enziguri! Gargano trying to get back on top of things. Gargano, unfortunately, unsuccessful in that NXT Championship tournament, got eliminated by Kyle O'Reilly, another man who previously faced Pete Dunne at a pay per view, back at Rebellion. Another man that was also unsuccessful, obviously. We're currently on 13 months of a Pete Dunne reign. Kick to the gut there by Pete Dunne to Gargano going for another X-Plex. Just dropping him down. Throwing around the weight of Gargano. What Pete Dunne does the best. Just throw people around. And speaking of throwing people, Gargano tossing Dunne over his head. And Dunne like a... Like a shark in the water, preying on Gargano, who was too busy getting the crowd riled up. Kick to the gut. Oh my god, looking to break the wrist of Gargano, but Gargano wriggling out of it immediately. He's clearly scouted that move. And Pete Dunne's not worn him down enough to hit it on him. Now looking for some diced bread. And he hits it. Gargano lifting Dunne. Oh my god! Looking for that driver and he hits it. Pete Dunne with a kick out though. These two men have been put on one hell of a match. You can see the bruises on Gargano's chest. From the vicious chops from Pete Dunne. And Pete Dunne managing to wriggle free knee strikes to the head of Gargano. Getting out of that Gargano escape. Grabbing Gargano before he can get properly sorted. There's an X-Plex. And now beckoning Johnny Gargano to get to his feet. Again like a shark looking to finish this off. Looking to go to Survivor Series. And beat Drew McIntyre. Pinfall attempt from that bitter end. One. Two. And it's a bitter end for Johnny Gargano. Pete Dunne. Picks up a win against Gargano. 
and sends a message to Drew McIntyre. 